Okay, it is Tuesday. It is the home opener for the Lansing Lucknuts, season 28. Yeah, who would have thunk? Who would have thunk they would have had this? You know much more money the Lugnuts are going to make in the month of April than any of the 27 previous years because they're going to play so many home games like today in weather that is conducive to people saying, man, it's a nice night, a nice day, let's go to the game, as opposed to last week with a crosstown showdown. Oh, my goodness. See, it's 44 degrees and the wind's blowing. Who wants to freeze their brains out and go there? Let's wait till the weather's good. And it looks like they're going to have good weather. For most of they're it. They're going to have it for this week, and they got six games. Thursday might be a tough one, Darren said. We were talking about it this morning. Thursday, there might be a bit of a risk of yeah, the but rain. but that's Thirsty Thursday. You play over it. It's true. You do. If it's Thirsty Thursday, you don't care what the weather is. Well, in the stands you don't, but on the you field you might. up on the concourse at the beer line. Take advantage of that. Believe me, the students will. Make sure you bring cards because there is no cash allowed at Jackson Field. All you guys Field. think the students at Michigan State love the lug nuts. No, they love Thirsty Thursday because it's hard to find $3 beer anywhere else in East Lansing. That's just telling it like it is. That's true. But uh, Rochelle Grand is on Studio 10 right now if you want to flip over to Channel 1. She's live at Jackson Field talking about all of the new additions to the field, the new hats, the new everything kind of going on plus what's going to be uh staying the same so she's well, why are you that. asking me all that? go switch to her she knows more about this than i do and amaya kuznicki will be live at 5 30 from jackson field as well uh but i want to talk to you about your reaction to both the men's and women's national title games were you surprised by either game no, or the, either winner the best teams that were ranked one for most of the year. South Carolina was ranked one all year. Mm -hmm. So no shock there. Uh, on the men's side, even though they said there was a lot of parity, my question with uh, Connecticut on the men's side is how did they lose three games? They got beat by 19 at Creighton. How? I'll never know. They lost by 15 at Seton Hall. How? I'll never know. And the third one they had was close as well. And that was, they, they had three losses, but I mean, can they beat the Pistons? You tell me. Well, is it because of what you just said? They were on the road at those games that Well, they that lost? was a huge factor in college basketball, which yeah. is the beauty of the tournaments, not the women, because the women's first two rounds are at home gyms. But I think that's going to change now. But on the men's side, they're all neutral gyms. But, I, I mean, Connecticut won every game in a tournament by double figures. I think good. part of it's because they're that good and part of it because there was so much parity in college basketball, there was no one else close to that. And in my opinion, Purdue's not close to them. Really? I don't think. I think Purdue's good by everybody. Purdue's, Purdue's the best in the Purdue's Big Ten. Purdue's very good amongst teams not named Connecticut. <laughs> okay. They're pretty good by teams not named Connecticut. If they played again, it'd be the same result. So you said that it might change with the women's. Is that the Caitlin Clark factor? No. Where? No, it's the credibility factor. Okay. The credibility factor is the women play 16 sites in the first round at the home gyms of the teams that are ranked in the top 16 because of the money factor, because if they go on neutral sites, nobody will go. Mm -hmm. But I think with the new rights deal they have, they realize that we need to make this more credible. I mean, if, if you're going to win in the women's tournament, you've got to be in the top 16, so you get two games at home. Mm -hmm. Then you're in the Sweet 16, and then you're two wins to the Final Four. That's helped Connecticut tremendously through the years because they always play at home, win two at home, okay? Um, but if you got to, but I think they're going to figure out a way geographically to get the women's tournament changed so that they're all at neutral sites as well. How do you think? And that's then gonna, we'll see how they draw. I was going to say that's going to be the next factor. I see. I, I I'm. I'm waiting on all this stuff. I hear, I see all the TV numbers. I see all that. I see all the bragging. Okay, let's see it next year because next year you're not going to have those stars. You're not. I mean, so is that East gonna, and Clark are both. Is it going to hold? Is it going to go down? Is it going to go up? I mean, I'm I'm always saying you got to do it over a period of time. And they, the advantage the women had, in my opinion, that the men didn't have this year was they had star. They had star they did. power. They did. And they had a monster team in South Carolina who didn't get beat. They're the only team in basketball that didn't get beat. So I wouldn't, I, I, look, I've got a, our middle son went to Purdue and worked seven years in the athletic department there and he paid a fortune to get a ticket to midcourt last night. So we were rooting for Purdue, but I, I didn't see it coming. No. I, I, so your bracket was perfect then? 
No, I had them going out earlier. Oh, see, I had pretty winning. Well, pr pr they had a great draw. Yeah. But you know what? I had them no matter how good UConn. the draw is, when you get to the title game, you better be good because you've gone through five meat grinder games to get there. Look, they played North Carolina State, who was 17 and 14, and they got them in the semifinal. They played Grambling. They played Utah State. They played a not as good Gonzaga team, which was fine, but they killed them. And then they had to play Tennessee tough, and, and yeah. they won that. Uh, but I thought the only way that they can win last night is those other players besides Edie have got not just contribute, they got to play well. They made one three-point basket. That's all they made. But last year they were bounced out in the very first round. In a single-game knockout, that can happen. Mm -hmm. And that was on their mind, obviously. Had to have been. Now, they, they were past that. Once you get to the title game, you've had a pretty good year. But I thought early, even when it was 16, 18, whatever it was, I thought Purdue can't hang with these guys. These guys are too good. Plus the fact Purdue only plays two, two three, maybe two reserves. And, and just like the South Carolina women, they come in in waves like a hockey, just like a hockey game. They're coming over the boards. They got, there's fast guy. I mean, this Edie looked to me like he was on the, you know, he was, he was trudging like Chevy Chase through the sands during European vacation. I mean, he looked exhausted by he the time he did look pretty went. tired. He was beat. And I, I, I get that. Mm -hmm. If they didn't have him, they'd have lost by a million. Well, it, the madness is gone for one year, and uh, we'll bring it back next year. So. so. Well, speaking of uh, college basketball, Kentucky is losing their coach. Who's the new coach? We don't know yet. Who would you pick? You got all the answers. Uh, not have all the answers. You got, you got all the answers. I would uh, maybe go after Oakland's coach. No, he's, <laughs> he's older than I am. Uh, Wouldn't that be what I, I'm not quite the story, though? I'm not convinced that Kentucky is going to absolutely, preposterously throw the money they can possibly yeah. throw at Dan Hurley at Connecticut. But... I don't necessarily think they're going to get him because he's an East Coast guy. Mm -hmm. But my question to Kurt Hurley, what, you've gone two in a row. What, what, what else do you, what, all you can do is go down. What, what else do you have to contribute there? He, he, would, he would have the stamina to fight off all those ridiculous Kentucky fans. You've got to be tough. I mean, you can say what you want about Calipari. He lasted 16 years with those Kentucky fans who were off the rails in terms of what they expect. And uh, th th that's no job for some weak guy. You 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 gotta you you gotta be the real deal. And I would be curious to Kentucky's got money. I have to believe they'll approach Hurley. Now he may not do it. Uh, apparently. Yeah, but he that's asked the night after the game, and you're not going to say, "Well, I'll consider that." That's a celebration no, night. Say, so, "Oh no, I'm saying it to you, Con. You He's don't ask that, that question right UConn. after you got the trophy. That that's there's another time for nope. that. Even Harbaugh didn't do that. Yeah, uh, that's right. But after the win last night, Hurley said he wanted to stay at Connecticut and is eyeing a modern dynasty, which is obviously what you want your coach to say. Well, he may well do that. Exactly. Um, but he, like you said, he's an East Coast guy. They're native to New Jersey, so they're probably going to want to stay um, somewhere close, especially if they know they can win there. So I don't know. Who would you pick for? Well, I'd go team? after Hurley. Well, Hurley taken out of the equation. Why? Why is he out of the equation? Because there's a chance he could say no. Well, then you go to plan B. <laughs> well, who's plan B? You know, for that, that job's a hard job, man. It's I, hard fan first base, of all, hard school. I don't think, you don't, to me, in modern college sports, you don't want somebody who's been to the top and is now on the way down. To me, you want somebody who's on his way up. up. Now, the guy's name's going to come up, and I think I don't, I'm not as high on him as everybody else is, is Nate Oates at Alabama used to be the Romulus High School boys basketball right. coach. And he's done well at Alabama. He did very well in Romulus, too. Yeah, but the Kentucky job's an entirely different animal. It's like being the new football coach at Alabama. You want to follow Saban? No. Good luck. See how easy that's going to be. You want to, I mean, but Kentucky, you know, that's a blue blood basketball school. Uh, you know, Calipari had a huge winning record there. The problem he ran into was the NCAA tournament, which is a one and done event. Yep. Okay, like I say to people, had he have beaten Oakland, would he still be a Kentucky? I think he would. I think he would. He'd still be a Kentucky. I don't think the Arkansas job would I have... think it's a good move for him to get out of there because he'll have a different vibe with Arkansas. That'll be, he'll do well there, I think. Yeah, they'll do what they got. They got money to, they got money for players. But Kentucky's job, that's, I, I don't know, boy, that's, 
that's that's a, a that's a tough a nut scary, to crack. It's a scary gig to take on. Would they go after Matt Painter? You tell me. Worth a shot at this point, I say. At, at what point are they just throwing darts and seeing what sticks? Same thing with Painter. Whoever gets that job is going to get a contract that sets you up for life. Okay, so if you fail, you, the money they would have owed Calipari thirty-five million dollars to fire him. Can you live on that at his age, sixty, whatever he is? So if they'd have fired him, that you're, you're, you're set for life. So anybody who's going to get the Kentucky job is going to get a lifetime contract. So if you lose and you get fired, fine, but you're still going to be set up. True. So. You know, you, you you know, pay me and I'll go lay on the beach in Tahiti, no problem. Uh, I, 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 Painter gets, he's like in Calipari, gets a rap because of the tournament they haven't every year done. But you know what, he's been at Purdue 19, I mean, he's a long time. But now what else is he going to do at Purdue? Edie, Edie's gone. See how easy that's going to be next season. Maybe do you, next season might be his deciding factor, but at that point, the Kentucky job won't be on the table anymore. Well, I, look, the ball's in Kentucky's court, but I mean, it, it's going to get expensive for them and, and it's going to be finicky for them because you're going to need one rough, tough son of a gun. The, the other name that comes up is Billy Donovan of the Chicago Bulls, but really? I, I don't know. Although the great thing he's got going for him is the NCAA rules are very relaxed now. They are. And he always has kind of considered rules more suggestions <laughs> than rules. So, hey, that might be enticing for him. He's got some kind of a deal collegially where paying the players is no longer illegal. Now we might have a little. He might say, uh, "Let's talk. Let's talk." Could be a good move for Kentucky. He was a guy that lost to you know Izzo and Michigan State in 2000 when he was at Florida, but then they won back to backs in 2006 and seven. Now, back when college sports were amateur. Uh, you know, he always had a reputation where, you know, how did he do that? How did he do that? Now, and it's kind of the no rules league, <laughs> that might appeal to him. <laughs> uh, last thing we're going to talk about is a critical game for the Detroit Red Wings tonight in the They'll race. They'll win. It's over. They'll win. I don't know if they're going to be in the playoffs. But Washington's, they're washed up. It's against Washington tonight, 7 p.m., um, entering the game. The Red Wings are in possession of the second wild card position. 84 points and 27 regulation wins. Four to um, two. There you go. All right. There you go. There you go. Now that doesn't mean they're in yet. It does not. It doesn't mean they're in there before games after that. It'll be uh, it'll be a tight tight game, and this is one of the races that's really. Probably the it is the tightest race in the entire league right now. A little different if it was in Washington. Then it's 50-50. Sure. I just don't see them. You know, the big key with the Red Wings, it, 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 Larkin's back, and he's a difference maker. He and is. And goalies play pretty well. Too. Alex Leon is being. He's, he's, he's played, very he, good. He's played a. He's played a little. Better. And he's young. So. Look, I don't think they're going anywhere. I told Brock today. You know, so if they get in and get crushed in the first round of the playoffs, why is that a big deal? Because the Red Wings fans are used to the fa the team making it for so long. I mean, for some fans, their entire life for those twenty some years, the Red Wings always made the playoffs, yeah. and then it was taken away and it was hard and you had to really rebuild everything and well you can't win it till you're in it you can't that's <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to be a smart aleck but but here it's easier it is a little bit easier to win at home just like it is in basketball and everything See, i else. can't fool you like i can fred no one enjoy i can fool those guys in here you know i'm up against my match so that's right you know, that's why it's tougher. So are you done with me or? Um, well, what do you guys got work coming up? I know other than the Lug Nuts home opener, there's some other stuff you guys well, got working Tigers on? Well, Tigers got four and a ninth and one at Pittsburgh. It was a comeback win. Yep, we were and watching Jeremy it today. made a great catch to save the game earlier. Riley made a great catch. He Riley made Green. one. Yep. So they're off tomorrow, then they host Minnesota. That gets them to seven and four. I haven't seen all the rundown yet because I had to go do Huge's show. He's not as good as you are. And so then you, I, I come back here to write the script. No, no, I got to come in here. It blocked him right like from the office. Like Fred always says, what in the world could they possibly ask you that you know that could help the show? I said, you don't ask me. I don't, you know, I'm not begging to get on anything. All right, here, here we go. Owen wants to know, what are your thoughts on Michigan State spring football? It's got another week and a half to go. <laughs> How's that? 
We do have interviews from Michigan State Spring Football on our YouTube channel if you want to catch those. I think there's so. something on there tonight, but I haven't seen it because I can't get in there and work there because I'm, you know, there's You're too, in such hot demand right now. I don't such know what baloney, to tell you. you know. They don't need anybody that knows anything. They need somebody that can kill time. And I'm good at that. You know, I've often remembered what I always tell you. What do I always tell you? I said, You're the angel of death. If baloney was concrete, I'd be I 96. So. <laughs> You're spilling everything all over the place. All right. That's no, all right. All right. A little bit later. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel for those MSU spring football interviews.